Welcome back to What RT Noobs with General Disturbance. And this may be a bit of deja vu because we've got a Waffentrager, a uh, Rhine Metal Borsig Waffentrager, Tier 8 German SPG, located on the south spawn of Empire Border in Counter, and it's under the command of Royal Flying Corps. So you've only just come out of a battle watching him on Redshire being rather successful and now he's playing on Empire's border. Well, it's the 128mm gun, capable of 490 alpha, penetrating 246mm of armour. So it's basically very similar in capacity to a Scorpion, it's just it's got better accuracy, better uh, punch. Well, not better accuracy, but a faster reload. So, um, but it's got a much worse mobility and of course virtually no armor at all so a modified Hetzer hull with a very big gun on it at least the scorpion has the hull of a panther which has got the mobility this thing well it's got virtually no mobility at all but what it does have is that punch power 491 hit points off that Lorraine who just breached the uh, top of that ridge line and well Royal Flying Corps made him pay for it and you notice how he quickly pulled back into cover because he wasn't using the bush mechanic when he fired so there was a possibility that the 40 ton would actually see him even though he was actually slightly obscured here comes the 40 ton again and yet again he's been hit and a round did come in against him there so somebody saw him I think and there's another round coming in there Okay, Carnarvon. He's trying to find the right spot to hit. No, that's one of your own. He's the other side of the ridge line, the target. T32 is just in cover, so the only shot you've got is on the Carnarvon. That probably won't pen. No, the round went flying right over the top of the Carnarvon. But he did the right thing to pull back into cover. Well, seeing as this is an encounter game, everybody's going to try and get into the cap circle. Which means the enemy is going to be very active around this rock. Trying to stop our guys from getting into that circle. But the enemy is in the circle at the moment. Still no shots on that T-32. Ah, oh, Ferdinand. We should be able to take him. Ow! Nice one. And he got a fire. He set light to the Kanaman. Burn, baby. Burn. Keep burning. Keep burning. Keep burning! Keep burning! Oh, he went out. That was a good bonfire. He obviously didn't have a fire extinguisher. Just kept going. Well, Al Ferdinand is um, putting some shots in, then putting back into cover again. Now, he still can't get a shot on that T-32. But here comes the enemy, Ferdinand. Goes for the lower plate, doesn't get it. And I don't think the third man was looking in our direction when that shot went in. The Carnarvon's now one shot because he's only got 17 hit points left. Just checking behind us because an enemy could sneak up behind us. In fact, actually, if you look at the minimap, you can see that most of the enemy is actually in their side of the map. So I don't think that's likely to happen, actually. <laughs> Okay, well, he's decided that he needs to get closer. But remember, this vehicle's got no armour. If you get spotted by the enemy, you are going to get penetrated. And you have been spotted. And I think it's the T-32 that spotted you. Uh, if he fires in this direction, Raw Flying Corps is going to take some damage. The T-32 is shying away from coming out. And he just got hit by Artie as well. Now, Royal Flying Corps decided to get back into cover. I think it's the third man that he wants now. Should be able to get shots on that third man. The Carnarvon there is risking a lot. He's actually on the edge of a cliff there. He could easily fall off. 
Oh, he's got shots on the T32, and he gets the kill shot. The Carnarvon hit him just momentarily before Royal Flying Corps put the coup de grace in, took him out of the game. But the enemy is still capping with four tanks up on the enemy now. They've only got one tank in the cap, and I think it's an IS-3, and I don't think he's going to be there for long. He is on this side of the cap, though. So Royal Flying Corps is going to get a shot at him any second, I just think. There he is. One into the NG Bay, finishes him off. Five tanks up on the enemy now. He's going to run short of targets to shoot at. There's another Borsig on his team who's actually gone up the valley towards the enemy spawn point. And the enemy's got a Borsig as well. Not sure he was in the right spot though to do some help. In fact, he's got two Borsigs. One of which is actually supposedly quite a good player. Well, the reason he's going up this way rather than the other is that he's more exposed if he's around the other side of the rock. But from this position, he might be able to get shots on the enemy who's trying to come through the pass. And he's decided now that he's going to be better off if he actually goes into the cap and comes out the other side and supports his teammates through the pass. Now there's supposedly a Borsig right across the valley from him. And oh, mama, this is a Borsig. Puts one into him, takes a round in return. This is Battle of the Borsigs. Go for the ram. Well, he rams him for 76. Will he reload first? Yes. Puts one into the gun shield, finishes off his team, uh, his enemy. His um, opposite number, I should say. But he needs to change position. There's another Borsig in play. There he is. Will he get another shot? Yes, he will. Oh, that's pretty nice. So, Four kills now for Royal Flying Court, and there's only two enemies left. One of which is the RT, and the other one is the Udez, who shot him across the valley and took him out of the game. Blew his turret off. Well, what would have been blown off the turret? I think that was an ammo rack, actually. Pretty sure. But the enemies aren't going to last very long. There goes the M40, so it's only the Udez, and we know where he is. He's directly across in the path across the valley, and that's where I thought the Rhine Metal Borsig Waffen Traegers were, but it turns out it was the Udez that was across the valley, and they were on this side. But at least Royal Flying Corps got the kills on them before the Udez found Royal Flying Corps. And the Udez has just killed our IS-6 as well. So it's five to one now. He's in Kolobanov territory. Three thousand eight hundred and twenty hit points of damage recorded. We'll see how much he actually got right at the end, but I'm pretty sure it is close to four K. Yak Panther two is going up one way, Lance and C the other. They'll corner him, but. Carnarvon's going up the other end just in case the Borsig missed him. And yes, they've cornered him. And he goes down to a shot from the Lance and Sea. And that's end of battle. Let's have a look at the end of battle stats. And it's an ace tanker for Royal Flying Corps in the Rhine Metal Borsig Waffentrager. He managed to get a fighter badge for getting at least four kills. He got four. A duelist for taking down two tanks who damaged him. A fire for effect for doing more damage in the hit points to his own vehicle. And he got a bruiser medal as well for getting at least five critical hits. He got 12 in this one. But he didn't get any other battle hero medals or epics, I'm afraid. Not on this occasion. His win eight from this game was 6,882, I think that is, yeah. And um, if we look at team score... We can see that uh, when it came to damage, he didn't get the highest. No, that went to the Udes, got high caliber and tank sniper for 4,029 hit points of damage. Just a little bit more than Royal Flying Corps managed to get with 3820. So by claiming Royal Flying Corps, he actually um, knocked 
Raw Flying Court off the top spot. And uh, yes, he got 4,029. 4, Raw Flying Court for 3,820. And after that, it was the IS6 with 3,238. And the Udes claimed both of those. Uh, when it came to kills, though, it was Udes who managed to get the top spot with five kills. Raw Flying Court got four. The IS6 and the GW Tiger P got two kills apiece. Nobody on the enemy team managed to get more than what two kills except for that Udes. And when it came to base XP, it was Royal Flying Corps. 1,199 base experience points, 1,048 goes to the IS-6, and 909 goes to that Lance and C who ended the battle. 10 shots fired, 8 direct hits, 8 penetrations, damage of 3,820 hit points, of which 2,657 were at more than 300 metres. Obviously, the close range shots were the ones on the uh, Borsigs, who were really, really close when they shot them, or one of them was at right up close and personal. Three hits received from the enemy, two penetrations, one of which was from one of those Borsigs, the other from the Udas, I'm afraid, and that was the fatal shot, and one hit received by way of splash damage as well. Two enemy vehicles spotted, six enemy vehicles damaged, four killed, and on a premium count he earned 50,775 credits, got 19,295 from Holy Ops, total 70,070 credits, and after repair and ammunition resupply took away 47,618 credits. He got 25 bonds from Veni Vidivici, and 1,798 XP, plus 7,196 for completing the mission in Ops, that's Holy Ops again, and total was 8,994 experience points altogether. So not a bad battle there. 3.8k combined. Um, but he did get seen and taken out by the Udes. He tried to get undercover as quickly as he could. He wanted that shot on the M40. But the Udes could see him. And the moment he stayed still, the Udes took him out. So sad about that bit. But very fast and furious once he noticed that Borsig <laughs> just over the ridge line and thought, oh crumbs. <laughs> but he went into action. Put the shot into the Borsig, rammed him for a bit, bit of ram damage, and then got the re beat him on the reload to take him out of the game. Nice. If you enjoyed that replay, please give this video a like and do subscribe to our channel. And thank you for watching.